There's a couple of things that keep me up at night. And one of those things that I constantly think about is when the next bull run comes, will I have the ability to sell when I say I'm going to sell or will I be a bag holder? And the second thing that uh, keeps me up is for the Bitcoin network, how strong is it and will it last moving forward as all these things that come about as far as the Bitcoin having? And that's what we're going to talk about today. So the first thing, there was a, a piece, an article that was uh, circulating a couple of days ago. We talked about how Bitcoin miners need Bitcoin price to be over really, let's just put 100K. 100K by the having This is analysis that was done. And for this, this piece, I'm just going to tell you right now before everybody starts shouting at the screen and say, no, 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 that's not, that's not correct. It's like way less. You're right. It is way less. So we'll get into that, which is this. So when I, when I saw this, kind of concerning, and it's, a, it's, an, it's an interesting article and it talks, it, it kind of gets convoluted with the, the, the stock price of different Bitcoin mining oper operations like Riot, Marathon, IRS, CleanSpark, BidFarms, and HUD8. And they, and they started to talk about the profitability of those said companies and how they needed to be X amount of dollars. And really what it comes down to is I really don't care so much about those companies if they do well or if they don't do well. I have I have bought stock a little bit in, in uh, Mara and Riot, but that's, that's it. It's, this isn't like a major part of my portfolio. So I really... I'm not concerned so much if these companies do great, fantastic or not. What I care about is what the price is going to be at the Bitcoin having. Let's just be honest. So this was a recent report by Seeking Alpha. And it talks about how despite Riot being expected to triple its mining capacity in 2024, they're still going to have to raise the expectations or the, or the price to be almost 100K for them to be profitable. A big increase in Bitcoin's price will therefore be required for miners to remain profitable at today's hash rate levels. And it goes over a bunch of different studies and things like that. And we'll get into the hash rate and the pull multiple and the hash ribbons and things like that in a second. The report concludes that nearly $100,000 could be required for miners to actually be profitable. Unless Bitcoin outperforms our Bitcoin thesis, we don't see any way where the Bitcoin sector can come out unscathed even with Riot's ambitious 35 exahashes. Our model suggests that Bitcoin's a trade above 98,000 to justify Riot's current valuation or post halving. I thought it was pretty interesting. There's a couple of things that you have to know about the, the hash rate and Bitcoin miners. First of all, <laughs> I am not a Bitcoin miner. And if you are into Bitcoin mining, my hat is off to you because that is a very difficult industry to be profitable, especially for the small guy. So if you're doing that, more power to you. It's not in my wheelhouse. But from what I gather, so the hash rate, the Bitcoin hash rate itself, it's just computational power. And of course, as things, as more Bitcoin miners come onto the network, you need more computational power to be able to solve those mathematical problems, to be able to to mine that said Bitcoin. And of course, when the Bitcoin halving comes, your efforts are gonna be slashed in half, essentially. That's just the way that uh, uh, the Bitcoin platform uh, has worked since 2009. 2008 is when the paper was written. 2009 was the first Genesis block. So we can see here, as the hash rate starts to go up, then of course, the reason for that is people are like, hey, the price is going up. I should probably get into Bitcoin mining, right? And everybody's having a great time until there's too many miners and it's just not as profitable and people got to shut the rigs off. That's just how it goes. So it's like a really beautiful dance. At some point you have to, you know, the smaller guy or sometimes even the big guy will have to like shut off their operations and the people that they can just stick around do pretty well. But again, they have to upgrade all those mining rigs. They have to pay for all that electricity to actually be profitable moving forward. And we can see that over time. It's just been up and to the right, except for right around May 14, 2021, everything just, everybody just started to apparently take a bunch of profits and then down it goes and we had a big, a big problem. But again, it just recourse is not a big deal. So when you're taking a look at what's happening in the system, there is this great website, look into bitcoin.com. There's a link in the description, 100% free. You can find all these different charts, really great stuff. Another thing that I take a look at is the hash ribbons indicator. And this is just taking a look at the 30-day moving average uh, versus the 60-day exponential moving average as it relates to the hash rate of the Bitcoin mining operation. And we can just see that here, once we get into this pink zone, that's when you see minor capitulation. Because they're like, look, the price itself 
is not sustainable to me. I have to turn off my rigs and off I go. So even in this, this, this document, they say, well, it has to be 98,000 to justify the current valuation. It's not so much about, from what, I, what it looks like, it's not so much about the valuation of Bitcoin itself, but the company itself. So there's this piece. So if you wanna take a look at when miners are capitulating, just take a look at the hash ribbons indicator. It's free, very simple. Once we get into the pink, they're capitulating. Once we go into this light pink, they're starting to go, okay, well, things are getting better. I'm gonna turn things off. And then when it gets into the white, then things are going you know, high speed. And this has worked pretty well up until 2021, quite honestly. And we can just see that here that, of course, the price goes down, they're capitulating, okay, and then, and the, and then as things start to uh, improve, not a bad buy indicator. Same thing happened over here and here. Light pink, the price goes up, everybody's happy, right? So this would be like the perfect thing. The problem with indicators is you need a bunch of them to verify whatever your thesis is. So we can see over here it didn't work so hot. Because in April 23rd, 2021, here's where things get a little goofy. So you got this, this dark part. You're like, okay, they're capitulating. And then when, you go, when it goes into the light pink, they're like, oh, they're turning things back on. But it just fell down even more. And then, of course, it went right back to capitulation. I'm like, okay, it's going to fall down even more. And it did. Then when it gets over here, you buy. So it worked out okay. Over here, you can see the same thing. Capitulation, when it gets to the light pink, they're coming out of it. But it didn't. Went back right back to capitulation. And then you're like, oh, great. I'm in this really sweet spot. I can buy some more. But it went down. Over the long haul, things that work out pretty well. So that's the hash ribbons indicator. You can take a look at it. Take it with a grain of salt and, and uh, pair it up with other different indicators like the Puel multiple. This is one of the things that I'm using right now for when we get into 2024 and 2025 for the time of when I believe I will sell 80% of all of my crypto, all of it, all of it, 80% at least. And we can see right here, this is just taking, it's calculated the daily issuance value of Bitcoin divided by the 365 day moving average. And I like simple things. I'm a simpleton. <laughs> so it makes, very, makes it very simple for me. So when we're having the, the Puel multiple, the daily issuance, which is what the miners are actually producing, we're going to see that in these times when things get into the red, things are way overheated, and you might want to think about selling. And, then, and inversely, when it gets into the green area, this is not a bad time to buy. Wouldn't this be sweet? Buying Bitcoin at $4,100, $3,700, $3,200, and then kind of going around this, this range, which is quite boring, which is what we're doing right now, are we not? Very boring, slow sideways action. People are falling asleep at the wheel. That's fine. That's fine because I will be there in the born. Anyhow, gets out of, the, out of this green territory and then you just kind of wait for things to go up. Maybe you take some profits along there. It's up to you, I'm not your dad, I'm not a financial advisor. And just kind of play this, play this channel. Again, when you take a look at these indicators, you can see yourself, okay, this is not a bad deal. And then lastly, this was a tweet out from Adam Back, one of the crypto OGs, Bitcoin OGs, I should, not, I should say. Not crypto OGs, this guy is not, Adam is not, He's not suffer altcoins. And he states this, miners need 98K won't break even. Well, if hash rates rise at 6.3% a month, like January through July 2023, hash rate in April 2024 will be 633 exahashes, blah, 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 blah. Uh, operation will be 58K break even. And then he goes about and says, you know, there, things can be more efficient. So that 58K number could be it. But he goes, but I don't believe it's 98K or 100K. So, when we're talking to look at this and people are flipping out about, oh my God, it's gonna be $100,000 and it's gonna take so much. Even if it does happen like that, well, that just means that a lot of the little guy, a lot of those Bitcoin miners that are out there that are struggling against the, the big guys, they'll shut off. The big guys will take a little more, more profitability because they don't have to have so much hash, hash rate power and they'll clean up. Unfortunately, that is where we're at in that state. So let me know what you think about that piece now there was this, this secondary, this price action, 2024. As you know, I believe in the four-year cycles. I believe that our all-time highs are going to hit in 2025. But I also know this one big glaring fact, which is that I'm not perfect and I have gotten things wrong in the past. So what I worry about is what if these all-time highs come at 2024? 
And then I just, I, and I had this chunk in my head going, okay, it's gotta be 2025. It's gotta be 2025. That's not the way to play this game in my humble opinion. Again, indicators. And if you're looking at uh, things to take a look at, there's a video I did. There's a link in the description why I'm selling 80%, the different indicators I'm looking at. Check that video out. So this is pretty interesting if we're taking a look at historically. And this was a report from Matrix Port. And I linked this in the description. Whoops. I linked this in the description. You can check out the report uh, as it says right here. But it states, Matrix on target, prepare for the soaring 2024 year on Bitcoin target of $125,000. I don't believe it's going to hit that. The Bitcoin halvings in April, I hope it does, but I don't think it's going to hit that. But I could see 50, 60K, but 125,000, eh, I don't know. This describes how Bitcoin could reach 45,000 by year end this year and 125,000 by end of 2024. Okay, great. I just, I like to talk about it because it gives a little hope and people like that stuff. However, this is where it gets good for me. On June 22nd, Bitcoin made a new one year high. June 22nd, 2023, Bitcoin made a new one year high, looking at year over year. This signal has historically indicated the end of bear markets and the start of new crypto bull markets. So I would just want to ask everybody right now, if you could do me a favor, in the comment section right now, tell me if we're in a bull market, if you feel like we're in a bull market, because I get varying opinions of exactly where we're at, if it's bull or bear. I think it's a little bit of a bullishness, but uh, that could be wrong. So with this one, previous occurrences took place in August 2012, December 2015th, May 2019th, and August 2020, with the actual bull markets materializing in 13, 17, and 21. One thing you'll notice is this. December 2015, when was the next all-time high for Bitcoin? Two years later, right? December 2015 to December 2017. Hit around $19,900 some dollars. May 2019 to roughly May 2021, roughly an all-time high. In April, it was 63,000. Okay, in November, you got me, 67,000. And then August 2020, well, that was a little bit more, that was a little bit more than a year, but it wasn't two years, but the all-time high in November. This signal has been triggered four times, and in all four cases, in all four cases, the bull market fully unfolded within 12 to 18 months. If history is any guide, there's now a 100% probability that by the end of 2024, Bitcoin will experience another massive bull market with a price target of around 25K. So look, if that comes true, great. I think we're all gonna have a great, a good time. I would stress everybody to watch that video about the indicators I'm looking at to make sure that uh, we hit those, those time frames. But there is something I need to, to talk about, especially if you're new, which I don't think, I think most of you here are kind of grizzled venture, veterans. So you know what I'm going to say, which is this, nothing goes straight up. But if we take a look historically, going back to 2015, it did do pretty darn well. December 2015, right? We're at Bitcoin at 390, 390 bucks. And it was just kind of like a straight line up. I mean, you, you, could, you could have done no wrong in 20, 2015 to 2016. Maybe a little dips here and there, little dips, but not like like what we what we feel nowadays. Two thousand, a little bit here, and then up up you go. At this point, things get over overheated. But what about the next one in twenty eighteen or twenty nineteen? So if we get here of May of twenty nineteen, things go up. Everybody feeling feeling pretty good. Up some more. Up some more. And then we get this kind of choppiness sideways, boring, a little bit down, a little bit sideways. So just remember that it's going to be like this for a while until having and beyond. And you could see your portfolio go down massively, like in this one. I don't know if it's massively. I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but it wasn't it March 2020 when we had that thing called uh, the pandemic, the coronavirus? It went from 10,000, it dropped like 50%, but it still did pretty good. And moving forward. And then, of course, we take a look moving forward into August 2020, that next timepiece they said, you did pretty darn well just doing this, investing into Bitcoin with some volatility moving forward. So again, I think these are the times to accumulate. I am personally hoping 
that during these times, uh, it doesn't start to go up uh, like a rocket ship. I'm actually kind of hoping for a little bit sideways action because I think in the long run, in 2024, 2025, I think we'll all do pretty well. But these are the things that uh, keep me up at night. Will I be able to sell? Let me you think about that in the comments section. And then lastly, let's talk about X, Twitter X, and Dogecoin. My new favorite thing to talk about. So this is from Doge Designer. And I just wanted to, this is like a public service announcement for everybody. There's been a lot of scams, which there's always scams in crypto, but I need everybody to be aware that uh, Twitter, which is now called X, is not putting out its own crypto coin. There is no X coin. There's no X coin that's gonna be done by Twitter. It's not happening. So just be aware of that. And Doge says, Elon Musk never launched a crypto token. Be careful of such articles. And Elon Musk himself says, yes, and we never will, meaning we will never put out our own crypto and digital asset. I'm like, huh, well, that's okay. They do have bigger plans though. I just saw there was a piece that uh, they're gonna start up uh, streaming services, which will be a little bit uh, higher in HD instead of what they have right now. They also have plans for an in-app trading platform. And if you remember about a year ago or so, they partnered up with Robinhood to offer that. Didn't materialize too much, but it looks like they're gonna do that. And this is something that Elon had talked about before. And look, I'm not a big Elon lover. I know some people love him and some people hate him. I'm just indifferent to him. He's just one of those guys that the things that he does in his realm, just pay attention to that because it can do some profitability for you down the road. That's all I'll say. So if we have all these things and these big things are happening on X, and we've talked about this before, and I know people have talked about this also as well, but just remember, there's a reason why he's got the Dogecoin logo right there. And not like I'm gonna talk about how great Doge is. I still think it's a meme coin. It was started off as a joke. Even the, even the creator of Dogecoin said, this is just a joke. However, things change, you know? Things change and if Dogecoin does get integrated as some kind of tipping service, I think it could do pretty well. Do I think it goes to $2 or $3? No, that's kind of crazy. I think it can do pretty well. And as people are making, I've talked about this before, but as people have made fun about Dogecoin, I put this out. There's a, there's a link in the description. You can, you can find this exact chart, what I'm gonna show you right now. If you scroll down, all my strategies, my degen plays, my crypto exits, the exit video, four year cycles, DCA and why Doge. I just wanna show you this. And I want you to think about your crypto token, whatever it is. I don't know what it is. How long has it been around? How well has it done? But just so you know, Dogecoin, it was created in December 6, 2013. 2013. And it's been like the top 30 for 10 years, for a, <laughs> for a decade. And everybody makes fun of it. But it's been around for 10 years. That's not bad. And just so you know, like it's not just some, some straggler, some, somebody just created out of thin air. It was a fork of Lucky Coin. I know it sounds goofy, but it is. And Lucky Coin is a fork of Litecoin, and Litecoin is a fork of Bitcoin. So it has some pretty good pedigree if you're looking at it that way. And in 2014, it was ranked 16th. And in 2015, it was ranked 9th. In 2016, it was ranked 6th. 2017, ranked 14th. And of course, it fluctuates. I just used the, the, the very first week of January as my, as my base case. 2018, it fell to 29th. 2019, it went to 24. And 5th of January, you got me on this one. It did go to 30, the, the 31st place, true, in 2020. 2021, it rebounded to 26. 2022, it was up to number 12. And 1st of January, 2023 is number eight. I think right now, correct me if I'm wrong, I know it's in the top 15, if not the top 10. So for a goofy meme coin, I gotta tell you, it's doing pretty good. I don't know how your cryptos are doing, but I gotta tell you, if you look back at this list, I can tell you, I don't know what the heck, PureCoin, Omni, Next, Namecoin, Quark, Megacoin. Why not Worldcoin? That's gotta be a different one. Primecoin, Feathercoin. I don't know any of that stuff. Paycoin. Let me go, let me go down here. This is, sometimes this is kind of fun. What the heck? In 2020, Bitcoin Cash is ranked fifth. Litecoin is sixth. EOS was number seven in 2020. Bitcoin Satoshi's Vision was number nine. <laughs> okay. Nine was Monero. That's, that's a good project. 
Tron and Cardano, Tezos, Huobi token, Neo. Was, so anyhow, 999 token or anything. But just take a look at that and just say to yourself, hmm, that's been around quite some time. And then also, as a, as a little piece here, and we talked about this before, if Elon wants to use this as some kind of like tipping transaction part, if you take a look over the past, this is just, just a year. If you go back three years over at uh, BitInfo Charts, the average transaction fee, this is like one of the, at one of the peaks here in May going into June of 2023. I didn't pick the, all, the absolute peak, so it wouldn't have been fair, but the average transaction fee back in 2023, oh, this is 2023, yeah. When things are going crazy, or when they're a little bit of, of up, Bitcoin was $14. And it wasn't even doing that, it wasn't like a ton of transactions. Ethereum was 19 bucks. And Doge was a was three cents, and you can see over time. Let's you know what? Let's just take a look. Let's go over three years and see how it's done. Yeah, that's pretty good actually. Uh, I don't. Oh, so let's take. Okay, let's go here. This is October fifteenth. Let's go to November when everything was the all time high. Not bad. Uh, Bitcoin average transaction fee was three dollars, three dollars and fifty cents. Ethereum was forty-eight bucks, unbelievable. Dogecoin was sixty-two cents. So just so you know, like I, I know this this comes about, especially with uh, if Elon wants to make this as a tipping thing and it gets mass adoption globally. I don't know if that's going to actually work out for Dogecoin unless they have something up their sleeve. I don't know why they don't use XRP or Lightning, but I'm not here to tell Elon what to do. I'm just here to kind of guesstimate what could actually happen. And then also, uh, check this out. I thought this was also interesting. If you want to verify this, uh, Ben's site, in the Cryptoverse, link in the description, you get 10% uh, off the first month. You can do a, a DCA simulation. And Ben did a video on this one, which is pretty interesting how he did it. But for this one, you can sign up and get this tool for free. And it is pretty fun to see like, and you can go through all these different cryptos. And what I like about this one, as, a, as opposed to like DCACC, is that you can compare a bunch of different cryptos right in line, as many as you want to. So like this one, I'm just gonna compare dollar cost averaging Dogecoin, 100 bucks a week to Bitcoin. And I, I don't wanna use 2015 because that's gonna be totally unfair because Bitcoin or Dogecoin was nothing back then. And Bitcoin was doing actually pretty good. But you can see if you would have, if you would have done that, you would have been at the peak. Oh, that's ridiculous. You would have had $43 million, but you would have had to invest 33,000, just so you know. But with Bitcoin, you would have had 2 million. Let's just, that's not even fair. So let's just go to 2018. Let's do that. January 1st after the big one. Okay. So if you'd have done, done this, at the all-time high, you would add three million. With Bitcoin, you had 126,000, and you would invest at 100 bucks a week. You would invest at 29,200 or 17,600. Now, it would only be worth 447,000 as of today, but Bitcoin would be worth 75k. So that's something to think about. All right, that's 2018, and just pay attention to the to the peaks here. 2018. Let's go 2019 because that. Same thing, really. I'm not going to go over it. 2019, 2020. All right. So things are catching up to Doge. How about 2021? Ah. So here, if you if you invested in the beginning of that monstrous bull run that we had, Doge, you only would have had 36,000, and Bitcoin, you would have had 2,300. You would invest 1,900. But if you would have done a lump sum. Well, you'd still want to beat Bitcoin, which is kind of crazy. Well, how about 2022? Ah, see, 2020. If you were starting 2022 investing into into Doge versus Bitcoin, you would be up. Well, actually, no, it's not true. Well, actually, yeah, you would be up Bitcoin a little bit. So, like in June, you would have invested two thousand three hundred dollars. With Doge, you would have had one thousand five hundred, and Bitcoin, you would have had one thousand eight hundred dollars as opposed to lump sums. Here, Doge would be up, you'd be down, and then as of today, you would be down almost 20% if you would have done it in 2022. How about this year? 
2023. Yeah, see. After all this time. Yeah, see. And you would, the lump sum, you would have done better. But then Dogecoin, you would have been down 10%. So, but it's just interesting though, over time, and I used to make fun of Dogecoin all the time. I just thought it was hilarious that people would invest into it. And I look at them like, hmm, not a bad deal. So let me just think about that in the comment section. Maybe I'm going off the rails. And uh, but, 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 lastly, I think this is the most important part. Uh, this, t this tweet I saw, and I would ask everybody, <laughs> I would ask everybody this, this option to, to not judge this individual for what he invested into, but judge him on his ability to be truthful with everybody and put out information that does not look very positive. Because let's be honest, in this, in this world that we you know, live in, it's all about showing everybody your best face forward and not admitting your flaws and not saying I screwed up and, not, and just saying everything's perfect, which we all know that's, a bunch, that's just ridiculous. We all are fighting our own internal battles. So judge this man on, on what he puts out and his honesty. And he states, Here's what a seven years of crypto life got me. Former multi-million dollar DCA crypto investor, Hex OG. And he says, I got the same leaking crappy 3000 trailer for the last seven years. The same car with half a dozen check engine lights on. Same five maxed out credit cards, same minimum wage job, fine to pay bills. My wife and kid deserve better. They suffered while I played someday with desperately needed funds. What a loser. And then he shows us his life. Buckets everywhere. Hallway, living room, bathroom. I'm a nobody loser, not worth the follow. Showing you what not to do. Don't put your life and family on hold to put money into crypto. And uh, I cannot agree more. So again, in the comment section, do not judge this man on what he has invested into. Speak to the fact that he actually dared open his soul to show you the negativity uh, that is uh, going on in his life. And that's it for today. So look, uh, that's it for today. If you liked today's video, give it a thumbs up, all that good stuff. Consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive. Now, if you want to, we'll go over the, <laughs> the, the Q and A and we'll talk about everything. We just, I can answer all your questions the best of my abilities and we'll go from there. If not, get out of here. It's a Sunday, hopefully a beautiful day where you're at.